this is optimization. It's the last thing under geometrical applications of calculus. And you'll see why in a second. Colloquially, these are called max min problems. I did mention that before. You want to know where's the highest thing, where's the lowest thing. Now, there are three broad categories. Here are my arrows. There are three broad categories of max min type problems. Let me tell you what they are. The first one, and it's the example I've got on the board right now, which I'm going to talk to. The first one is just abstract functions, which have nothing to do with anything in real life. It's just x's and y's, and I just want to find the biggest y or the lowest y. That's all I'm after. Mm -hmm. Abstract functions, abstract meaning, it has nothing to do with any context. You look at this, there's no context. I just want to find some numbers. Okay? The second kind of problem is geometric, uh, well, situations, I guess, but it, an example would be, okay, I've got a, um, where's the thing I want? Here we go. I could say, I have a one meter cable. Okay, I have a one meter cable. I am going to cut this one meter cable into two portions, right? And out of one portion, I am going to draw a square. And out of the other portion, I'm going to make a circle, okay? So this is like this geometry here. You see that, right? Um, there's a certain length of cable, okay? And my question might be, for instance, what's the maximum area? I can get from both of my shapes. Because obviously, I can make the square bigger, and that would make the circle smaller, right? Oh. And there's going to be a different area there, right? Where's the sweet spot? Where can I get the greatest area, OK? This is a geometric problem, and I'm looking for a maximum. I'm trying to optimize to get the most area, OK? So this is a geometric type problem. This is not easy, by the way, but it's, it's a classic. Um, other things are like, OK, I've got a, um, a circle, and I have a triangle that's inscribed in that circle. What is the greatest area of the triangle that I can get? How big can I make that thing? It's like, say it's the unit circle, for instance. Okay, because I can draw a whole bunch of different triangles that are um, that are inscribed in the circle. Which one will give me the biggest area? I'm going for the maximum. Okay, it's worth saying maximum maxima problems are far more frequent than minimum problems, because when you have a look at both of these problems, uh, for example, have a look at this one. I could get a triangle with no area. There he is. Woohoo! But that's boring. There's nothing interesting there, right? Maxima tend to be more frequent, though there's no reason why you can't find minima, because we have the applications of different calculus to find a max or a min. They're both just different kinds of turning points. Even if you did find a triangle, how would you describe it? You would say it's a triangle with height this and oh, base that. Okay. Something like that. Okay. okay. Don't worry, we'll get to those. Now there's one other kind of category, abstract, um, geometric, and then they tend to be like they're real world problems, but they're almost all about rates. Okay? So it's like you want to travel somewhere or you want to pour in water at such and such a rate. What's the fastest you can do it? What's the slowest you can do it? Okay? So these are like your three overarching categories. The mechanics underneath it are all the same, right? It's we'll differentiate. Find a turning point. Tell me what kind of turning point it is, and then prove it. They're all going to work through that, but the context looks very different, and questions can look very different, even though underneath they're all in the same family of problems. Okay, does that make sense? So we're just going to start with um, one or two abstract examples, okay? Because that's where it starts off, and it's easiest. You don't have to worry about these other concerns. Okay, these are kinds of like extra layers of complexity on top of this. So here's the question. That's it. I've got a function. You'll notice I have a domain. This comes up quite frequently in max min problems because usually you have some kinds of constraints such as my cable is only so long, like you don't have an infinite amount of cable, okay? So you're actually trying to solve for a real situation and because these are leading into these, even though like this function, its domain is all real x, okay? But they artificially impose a restricted domain on it to make things a little more interesting and to feed you towards here where there will be an actual restriction there that's part of the question. So, simple, here's a function. In this domain, what's the max, what's the min? That's it, that's all you have to find, okay? So, let's tackle this question. Now, obviously, we, we have calculus to find out maximum turning points and minimum turning points. So that's the first place we're going to begin. Let's get our derivative, okay? And I'm going to say, here, it's a pretty straightforward uh, derivative, like so. Okay. What am I after? What, what's the purpose of me finding the derivative? 
find the stationary points. I want to find stationary points. I want to let it equal to zero. Therefore, I need to factorize this thing, right? That's why I factorize. I don't do it randomly. It's because I'm going towards tiny points, okay? So I'm going to take out my factor of three. What's the factorization? X squared minus one. Uh, three outside the front. It looks like minus one, minus three oh, to me. Okay. Yeah, is that okay? So now I can see where it's equal to zero. Now, pause for a second. I usually would say find stationary points that determine their nature. Okay, stationary points in themselves are actually no use for finding a max or a min. What I really want is a turning point. We know that these ideas overlap, but if I find a stationary point and it's a horizontal point inflection. It's, it's no use to me. Okay? So what I'm going to say at this next point is potential turning points, right? because I don't know they're actually turning points yet. I haven't gone to the secondary or anything like that. And in fact, I'm not planning to. I'm going to say potential turning points uh, occur at, and I just read off the values because I factorized, namely x equals 1, one, one three. or 3. Done. Okay. Now, <coughs> At this point, I have a bit of a choice. Okay, you can sort of go to your, your, your flowchart thing here, right? What I could do is I could find the second derivative. It's not hard to find in this case. I could find that one is a max and one is a min. Like one of them will be each, okay? And then I can say, well, therefore, here are the conclusions I'm going to draw. Except for the fact that, do you remember, when we talked about max and min, we noticed that there were two different kinds, right? We said, if you've got a maximum or a minimum, you look in your little neighborhood, <coughs> right? And you might be the highest point. But if you look further, if you look outside, it's like, no, no, no. There's plenty of places I can go higher or lower than that. So the language we used for that was either local or relative, right? That's like just in this little spot. That's not what this question is asking. It's asking what is the maximum or minimum full stop, not what's where are like in this little patch, okay? So therefore, I actually need to have a look at how far can I go. Like this is, is corresponding to like what are all the different numbers I can try. Okay? So therefore, these potential turning points are not the only ones I need to look at. I also need to look at the endpoints, or they're also called boundary values. 